I've been looking into various methods for calculating the digits of pi. Many approaches involve summing an infinite series, an example of which is shown here. In practice, you would only need to sum up the first few terms in the series if you only want to compute pi to a small number of decimal places. But as you increase the precision of your value for pi, not only will more terms need to be included, every term will have to be evaluated to more decimal places. Notice that some of the first few terms in the series will still be involved when computing the 1000th digit of pi. A few decades ago, mathematicians reformulated this infinite series into a different form that would allow the digits of pi to be computed using a streaming algorithm, which in the research literature has been named a spigot algorithm. Spigot algorithms compute irrational numbers such as pi by generating digits one at a time and only keep enough partial results in memory for computing subsequent digits. Notice that all the internal variables are being overwritten every few iterations. More importantly, the same integer operations are applied to a small set of variables. There is no need to introduce new terms in order to compute more decimal places. However, as more digits of pi are output, the intermediate results stored in those internal variables consume ever-increasing amounts of memory. Of course, a fitting platform to run a spigot algorithm to compute pi would be a Raspberry Pi. There is already a Python package called PyDigits that implements the spigot algorithms described in the research paper mentioned earlier. However, Instead of simply using the pi digits generator and calling it a day, I wanted to make it more visually explicit that my Raspberry Pi was executing a, a spigot algorithm. A 10k potentiometer would function as the check valve on the spigot. I did not have any brass or copper colored card, so I bent a piece of gold colored card into a spigot shape. I suppose one could also use white cardstock and paint it afterwards. I didn't have any metallic paint either. 5 max 7219 8x8 LED matrix modules daisy chained together would display the digits of pi. Four of these modules were already daisy chained using jumpers when I bought them on eBay. I added a fifth one and soldered it to the other four, but this connection lacked the rigidity of jumpers, so it all had to be reinforced with wooden lolly sticks and zip ties. I did not have an appropriate hat for the Raspberry Pi in order to interface with the Mac 7219 modules, so I had to build one using female header pins and a piece of perf board. I didn't need to use all the pins, which is why there are gaps. The 8x8 LED display is removable, which made it easier to solder all the required connections. I'm wiring up a 6-pin female header that will be used to connect up the 10K potentiometer and spigot LEDs. This is the ground wire. Note that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an analog to digital converter, so I'm using a hack where a capacitor is charged via the 10K potentiometer, and then the time it takes to reach the threshold for a logic high is measured. This small circuit board also contains the current limiting resistors for the spigot LEDs. This Raspberry Pi acrylic case from Pimaroni has mounting holes that can be used to support the spigot assembly. The wooden sticks come from a pickup sticks game and they fit very neatly into the air gaps in this car corrugated cardboard that I'm using. There are six wires in the connector for the spigot assembly one for ground, three for LED animation, and two for reading the potentiometer.
Just a final tidy up before testing the software. We have the digits of pi on tap. You could say that the spigot algorithm for streaming the digits of pi is controlled by a spigot.